Hi guys. So continuing our review for unit four, we are on unit 4.3. This is um, about polygons and then parallelograms a little bit. So as a reminder with polygons, you need to be able to find the sum of interior angles of a polygon, um, which is represented by S. And we do that by taking the number of sides or angles that your polygon has, which is n, subtracting 2, and that gives us the number of triangles that that polygon has, and then multiplying by 180, and that gives us the number of degrees in that polygon. So as a reminder, this is what we... Um, this is what we did in class together, right? So you're able to take the number of sides, subtract two, get the number of triangles, multiply it by 180, because each triangle has 180 degrees, and then you get the total number of degrees. All right, next we have the interior angle of a regular polygon. All right, so a regular polygon is one in which all of the sides are congruent and all of the angles are congruent. So like a square or an equilateral triangle. All right, so if you know the total of number of degrees of that polygon, which you can find, right? You have a formula for S. Then you're just going to put that number over the number of um, sides or angles. So for example, if you have a square, right, you know how many, degree, how many degrees you have in a quadrilateral. If you don't, look back here, right, you have 360. And you know that you have four sides, four angles, so it would just be 360 divided by four, and of course you get 90 because in a square every angle is 90 degrees. All right, so that's how that would work. Next, we have exterior angles, right? So the exterior angle of a polygon is the one that is adjacent and like forms a linear pair with the interior. So looking at like this triangle, right? 79 is the interior, 101 is the exterior. Together, they form 180 degrees. And we figured out together that the sum of exterior angles of a polygon is always going to be 360 degrees, always, always, always. Doesn't matter what polygon it is. All right? And then the way that we can find one exterior angle of a regular polygon is really similar how we, to how we find one interior angle of a regular polygon. All right? So we have to take the total which in this case is 360, it's not S, right? Because it's the same every time. And we're putting that over the number of angles that we have. So 360 over N. When you're asked to find the number of sides that a regular polygon has, you're just going to do 360 over the degree. So they'll tell you what each degree is, and you're gonna do 360 over that, and that's going to give you N. Um, and the reason that we, um, we, we do 360 over the degree rather than working with S is because if you don't know N, you can't find S, right? And I don't think, that they're not gonna give you S, but you know that, um, you know that 360 is universal. It applies to every polygon. All right, so let's do a couple of these. Um, what is the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a pentagon? All right, so pentagon means five sides. You have to know that. As a reminder, anything after um, 10 decagon, you're just gonna be told. Like for number two, it says 27 gone, right? I'm not expecting you to memorize past that. So all you would do is five minus two, so three times 180, 540. And please make sure you're doing this with me.
All right, you can do number two. Next we have number three. Um, what is the measure of each interior angle of a regular octagon? All right, so a regular octagon is an octagon that has you know equal angles equal sides so you can find s like we did above right i just wanted to show you how the s formula was used or if you get to use your notes on your assessment you can go and look and say okay an octagon has 10 um or 1080 degrees and we're going to divide that by eight because every angle is going to be the same so it's 10,080 divided by eight, 135 degrees. Okay, let's see if we need to do any of these. Um, <laughs> I think we're good here. Those were like the two big things I wanted to hit on. Um, let's talk a bit about about parallelograms. All right, so I have these filled in already, so it doesn't take as long. Um, parallelograms are quadrilaterals with five um, requirements. So these are unique to parallelograms, and if a quadrilateral can't meet all of these and it's not a parallelogram. So first, opposite sides are parallel. So if we're looking at number one, that's A, B. Oh, give me a second. A, B is going to be parallel to D, C. And then A, D is going to be parallel to B, C. All right. Additionally, we know that opposite sides are congruent. So opposite sides are both congruent and parallel. So like parallel, remember we use the arrows, and congruent. Parallel and congruent. Additionally, opposite angles are congruent. So D is congruent to B. A is congruent to C, right? So if you know D, you know B. If you know A, you know C, vice versa. Um, and then this is really important. Corresponding angles are supplementary. So corresponding being like two that share a side. So A and D are corresponding. A and B are also corresponding, um, which means A plus D is 180. A plus B is 180, which makes sense, right? Because we already know that B and D are congruent. Um, lastly, we know that diagonals bisect each other, so that's not present on number one or two, but it is on number three. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and say that I don't want you focusing on that um, for your test. I will leave off diagonals. Make sure you know that it's a property, um, but it's not really tested on like MCAS or anything, um, and I'm just trying to minimize the number of things you have to be worried about right now. Um, so just focus on one through four okay so when you're finding like missing measurements here when you're doing sides that's really easy because they have to give you one of each right they can't expect you to find let's say they don't give you bc there's no way for you to get that or ad just knowing that ab is 15 right so they have to give you information about each set of sides right so we know that um, we know that BC is eight, and that's congruent to AD, so that's eight. We know that DC, or I'm sorry, we know that AB is 15, so we know that DC is congruent to it's 15. So sides are really easy. Then for angles, here's where you might have to do some work. Um, we're asked for angle A, which we know is congruent to angle C, but we don't actually know angle C. So we need to find both of them. And the way that we do that is by, like we know that it's um, supplementary to, A is supplementary to D, right? C is also supplementary to D, so it doesn't matter which one you do first. But we know D is 180, so we, or sorry, D is 68, so we do 180 minus 68, 
then we get 112. And check for reasonableness, right? Like A is clearly larger than D, so make sure you just didn't make a mistake with the subtraction there. So from there, we can just fill all these in. This is 112. B is opposite of D, so it's 68. C is opposite of A, so it's 112. All right, and that's really um, all I need you to know. So go ahead and complete question number two. Code word, because I'm going to continue to do this for today, is um, soap, something I hope you all are using every single day. Um, so if you have questions on this, make sure you're telling me the code word so that I know you have already kind of accessed this. Um, and I think that's it. All right, so watch this. I excel, and you'll be good to go. Talk to you guys later. Bye.